In this video, I will discuss a couple of problems on the current topic of discussion that is potential energy and stability. So this uh, problem has been taken from the text of Engineering Mechanics by Bedford Fowler. It is a solved problem in that text and it reads that the pinned bars are held in place by the linear spring. So what is a linear spring? It is that spring for which the restoring force is having a linear relationship with the displacement. So all the springs that we have seen in this text are the linear springs because we are able to represent the relationship between the linear, the linear relationship between the restoring force and the displacement. And when we integrated this equation with respect to X, we got the energy equation. That is the elastic potential energy is equal to half of kx square. Okay, so this is the energy equation and this is the force equation or the momentum equation. So remember one thing, whenever we integrate the momentum equation, we get the energy equation. Okay, so this is the linear spring. So in addition to the linear springs, we might also have non-linear springs where the relationship between the spring force and the displacement is not linear. Okay it might be non-linear. So now again reading the question, the pinned bars are held in place by the linear spring. So there are two bars, let's take this to be C. So the two bars AC and BC are pinned at point C. The end A of the bar AC is hinged and the end B of the bar BC is connected to a roller, which is further connected to a spring, okay? The linear spring having a spring constant of K. The spring is unstretched when alpha is equal to zero. Now we can see that the bars are making an ang angle of alpha with the horizontal. Therefore, when alpha is equal to zero, the bars will be completely horizontal. Okay, one can clearly see that when alpha is equal to zero, this will be the bar AC. This will be the bar BC. That is the roller B will be at some position when alpha is equal to zero. Because at alpha is equal to zero, the points A and B will be the farthest away from each other. And when this alpha is going to increase, the point A is in its place. The, bar, the point B is going to shift towards left. Therefore, as alpha is going to increase, B is going to come closer to A, okay? And when B is going to come closer to A, the stretch in the spring is going to increase because at this instant, the spring is unstretched. This will be the length of the spring when the roller is at this position. That is when the bars are horizontal or rather we can say that when alpha is equal to zero, the bars AC and BC will be horizontal. The point B will be farthest away from A and the spring in this state is unstretched because it is clearly mentioned that when alpha is equal to zero, the spring is unstretched. That is the bars will be horizontal and the spring will be unstretched. And one can clearly see that as the alpha is increasing, the B, point B is shifting towards left and the point B is coming closer to A. And when the point B is coming closer to A, the stretch in the spring is going to increase, okay? So in current case, this is actually the stretch in the spring X. This is the length of the spring when it is in the undeformed state. This will give us the total length of the spring, okay? And the bars are in equilibrium when alpha is equal to 60 degree. If you remember the previous question, we had to find the angle theta for the equilibrium, but here the angle 60 is given. That is when alpha is equal to 60, the system is in equilibrium. Okay, so what actually we have to find out in this question is the spring constant K and determine whether the equilibrium position is stable or unstable. Okay, so this is the question. Now we can see that each bar is having a weight of W and length L. So each bar is having a weight of W and length L. Since the weight of the bar is given to be W, therefore, there will be gravitational potential energy associated with the system. As well as the spring is in the stretched state, we also have the 
potential energy that is known as the elastic potential energy. Thus, the potential energy term in this case will be the summation of the gravitational potential energy because the center of gravity of these bars will be located at some position with respect to the datum plus the elastic potential energy on the account of the stretch in the spring. Okay, so let's calculate one by one these both terms. Let's first calculate the gravitational potential energy. We can see that this will be the center of gravity of the bar AC. And since these bars are homogeneous and the alpha is same in this case, this will also be the uh, center of gravity of the bar BC. We'll have a weight force acting at the center of gravity. This is the weight of bar AC and this is the weight of bar BC. To calculate the gravitational potential energy, we have to select a datum. So this plane, this horizontal plane passing through the hinge A can be taken as the datum plane. And what is the distance of the center of gravity from the datum? Okay, because we have to calculate the gravitational potential energy. We know that the gravitational potential energy will be equal to the weight of the bar and the distance of the center of gravity of the bar from the datum. Now, in this case, you can see that the center of gravity is lying below the datum. And we have seen in the sign conventions when center of gravity is below the datum, the gravitational potential energy is taken to be negative. And what is the vertical distance of the center of gravity from the datum? That can be given by this right angle triangle here. This will be L, L by two, okay? If the length is L, the distance between A and the center of gravity will be L by two. Since this is alpha, we can find this height of the center of gravity from the datum. Let's draw this right angle triangle here. This is A, this is G, the length between A and G is equal to L by 2. This is angle alpha. And we are interested in this distance because this is going to give us the distance of center of gravity from the datum. And one can clearly see from this right angle triangle, it will be equal to L by 2 sine alpha. And since this is downwards, therefore, we have to take it, we have to take a negative sign with the gravitational potential energy because the center of gravity is below the datum plane. Therefore, the gravitational potential energy of this bar AC will be WL by 2 minus WL by 2 sin alpha. And the same will be for the bar PC. Okay, for the bar PC, the gravitational potential energy will again be equal to minus. WL by 2 sin alpha. So the net gravitational potential energy of the combined system will be minus WL sin alpha. So this is the gravitational potential energy term. Now, if we focus our attention and try to find out the elastic potential energy, now, what we need for the elastic potential energy term is the extension in the spring. And just before I discussed that when the bars are horizontal, that is when alpha is equal to zero, you can expect this point C to be here. This point B will correspondingly shift towards right. Okay. This will be the bar AC. This is the bar AC. And this is the bar BC. The spring in this case will be in its undeformed state. And when alpha is going to increase, this bar, this roller B is going to shift towards left. And this actually will give us the stretch in the spring. So we are interested in finding this X. And one can clearly see that this AC is equal to L. Okay, this length AC is equal to L. This length BC is also equal to L. So the total length between A and B when alpha is equal to zero, that will be equal to 2L. And if 
we want to calculate the stretch, what we have to subtract from 2L, okay, is this length. And one can clearly see if we draw this, okay, this length from here to here, it will be equal to L cos alpha. And the distance from this point to the point B, it will be equal to L cos alpha. Therefore, the total distance from A to B will be equal to 2L cos alpha. And the extension will be given by the subtraction of this 2L and this 2L cos alpha. So this is the way how we can find out the extension in the spring because the subtraction will give us this distance, which is the extension in the spring. Okay. Now let's see again, whatever I discussed, I have put forward in this figure. This is hinge A. When alpha is equal to zero, both these bars will be horizontal. Therefore, this C will shift towards right and this roller B will be somewhere here. Okay. And this length of the spring will be the undeformed length of the spring. And the distance between A and B will be the farthest, okay? It will be the maximum distance between them. And that will be equal to, since this length is equal to L, this length is equal to L. Therefore, this length will be equal to 2L. And when alpha is going to increase at this position shown in the figure, this length will be equal to 2L cos alpha. Because if we draw a right angle triangle, this base will be, L cos alpha and this base will also be equal to L cos alpha and the net distance between A and B will be equal to 2L cos alpha. So subtracting this 2L cos alpha from this 2L, we will get what? We will get this extension in the spring which has been shown by the blue color. So this is actually the extension in the spring. Therefore, what we can write is if we want to write the elastic potential energy, it is actually equal to half of kx square, where x is given by 2L minus 2L cos alpha. Okay, so no need to draw this diagram in the examination. It is just for the explanation. The uh, It should clearly come into the mind of the students that the extension will be given by the subtraction of this 2L because when alpha is equal to zero, roller will be here. The distance will be 2L, okay? When uh, this alpha is going to increase, the roller will shift towards left. This distance between the points A and B will decrease, okay? It will decrease because B is coming closer to A and the decrease in this distance between A and B will give us the stretch in the spring. So one can write the elastic potential energy to be equal to one by two K. The extension is given by two L minus two L cos alpha. Okay, rather we have a square as well. So the elastic potential energy term will be equal to one by two. We can take two L common and in brackets we can have 1 minus cos alpha we have square with this so 2l square will come out of this brackets and therefore it will be 4l square 4 by 2 will be 2 So this is the elastic potential energy. Now we can write the potential energy function because we have calculated both the gravitational potential energy and the elastic potential energy. The gravitational potential energy term was WL by two, sorry, WL sine alpha minus WL sine alpha. And the elastic potential energy term is equal to 2KL square one minus 
cos alpha whole square okay so the mechanics portion is complete because what we have to do with respect to the concepts we have to bring this potential energy as a function of a single independent variable hence we have got the relationship between potential energy and alpha okay so we have developed the potential energy function now it's just only calculus okay after this so for equilibrium we know that for equilibrium dv by d alpha will be zero okay so we have to calculate the first derivative of the above function dv by d alpha it will be equal to minus wl the derivative of sine alpha will be cos alpha plus 2k l square this is constant the derivative of 1 minus cos alpha will be twice 1 minus cos alpha okay and the internal differentiation of this 1 minus cos alpha the internal differentiation of 1 is 0 and the internal differentiation of this minus cos alpha will be minus minus sine alpha that will be plus sine alpha so this derivative will be equal to and this derivative has to be equal to zero in brackets we can have one minus cos alpha So this has to be zero. Now it was mentioned in the question that for equilibrium, dv by d alpha is equal to zero. And it was also given in the question that the system is in equilibrium when alpha is equal to 60 degree. Therefore, we can substitute alpha is equal to 60 degree in this equation and we will get which implies minus w l cos 60 plus 4 k l square 1 minus cos 60 sin 60 this will be equal to zero let me check the condition once again whether it was alpha is equal to 60 yes it was alpha is equal to 60 okay the bars are in equilibrium when alpha is equal to 60 so one can see that cos 60 is equal to 1 by 2 therefore it will be equal to minus w l by 2 plus 4 k l square 1 minus cos 60 that will be again 1 minus 1 by 2 at sine 60 is equal to root 3 by 2. This will be equal to 0 and after some simplification we will get that we are simplifying it to minus L by 2 minus W L by 2 plus 4k l square it will be equal to under root 3 okay so it will be under root 3 k l square this will be 0 and l and l can cancel out we will have minus w by 2 that will be equal to minus 
root 3 kl and since we had to find the spring constant so spring constant in this case will be given by w by 2 under root 3 l so the spring constant will be equal to once we solve this 2 by root 3 it will be equal to 0 0.289 So this will give us the spring constant for the equilibrium. Okay, so this has to be the spring constant for the system to be in equilibrium. Okay. Also, we have to check the stability condition. Okay. Now let's check the stability condition. For the stability, we have to compute the second derivative. So first of all, we will write the first derivative again, that is dv by d alpha, it was equal to minus wl cos alpha plus 4k l square one minus cos alpha multiplied by sine alpha okay so this was the first derivative we can simplify it a little bit it will be equal to minus wl cos alpha plus 4k l squared we'll have sine alpha and minus sine alpha cos alpha now i can multiply by 2 and divide by 2 so it will become y sine alpha cos alpha that will be equal to sine 2 alpha and since i multiplied the numerator by 2 i have to divide the denominator by 2 so now we can compute the second derivative this will be equal to minus w l okay the derivative of cos alpha is minus sine alpha so it will become positive w l sine alpha plus 4k l squared the derivative of sine alpha will be cos alpha and the derivative of sine 2 alpha will be cos 2 alpha okay divided by 2 and multiplication of this with the internal differentiation okay so the internal differentiation of this 2 alpha will be So this will be equal to W L sine alpha plus 4K L square cos alpha minus cos 2 alpha. So I had to check actually at alpha is equal to 60 degree. Therefore, the second derivative of this potential energy function at alpha is equal to 60 degree it will be equal to cos 60 minus cos 120 so once we evaluate this it will be equal to root 3 by 2 wl plus 4k l square cos 60 is equal to 1 by 2 and minus cos 120 it will be equal to minus minus 1 by 2 that will become plus 1 by 2 so this will be equal to under root 3 by 2 wl plus 4k l square okay so this is the second derivative and we can see that this second derivative is actually it's coming out to be a positive quantity because all these terms will be positive 
when these terms are positive and the second derivative is positive, we say that it is the condition of minima and the condition of minimum potential energy corresponds to stable equilibrium. Okay, so this is the condition for the stable equilibrium. Okay, so this ends our question. Let's see one more question. The small cylinder, okay, this has been taken from Miriam Kirik text. It is an unsolved problem in the textbook of engineering mechanics by Miriam Craig. The small cylinder of mass M and radius R is confined to roll over this circular uh, surface of radius R. We can see that there is a small cylinder whose radius is equal to small r and it is confined to a roll on the surface of a circular surface. Okay. And this is a circular surface and this is a cylinder. The cylinder is confined to roll over this circular surface. So for this circular surface, the radius is capital R and for this cylinder, the radius is small r. By the methods of this article, prove that cylinder is unstable in the case A and the stable in case B. So by the methods of this article means we are actually discussing the potential energy criteria. Therefore, by the potential energy criteria and hence the stability, we have to uh, prove that this, uh, this case A is unstable and this case B is stable. Okay. So here we can see that we will have only gravitational potential energy terms. Because there isn't any elastic member, okay? Let's take the first case. And we know that it is in the unstable equilibrium. We just had to prove it. Therefore, we are actually giving it a smaller angular displacement, okay? It is rolling over this circular surface whose radius is equal to capital R. And let us say that if this is the initial position, therefore it has undergone an angular displacement of uh, theta, okay? So this is the initial position and this is the final position after some displacement and the angular displacement during this is equal to theta. Now, to calculate the gravitational potential energy, what we have to do is first of all, select a datum. Now this, line okay this line or this plane which is passing through the center of this curved surface of the radius r can be treated as datum then this will be the center of gravity of the cylindrical surface i mean to say that the cylindrical roller will have the center of gravity here and we have to find the distance of the center of gravity from the datum now this angle is equal to theta Therefore, this angle will also be equal to theta. Now, the distance of this point to this point, it is equal to the radius of this circular surface and it is equal to capital R. And if we add this radius, okay, if we add this radius, that is equal to small r. So, the distance of center of gravity from this point O, let's take this to be the point O, it is equal to r plus r. Okay, so this OG will be equal to R plus R. Radius of the circular surface plus the radius of the cylinder. Okay, so from O to this point on the surface of this cylindrical, of this circular surface, it will be equal to capital R and we add the radius of the cylinder to it. The distance between O and G will be equal to R plus R. Okay. So this is a hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. And it is equal to R plus R. Then the distance of center of gravity from the datum will be equal to. Now this distance will be equal to its cos component. It will be equal to R plus R cos theta. Okay. So we can write that. distance of CG of cylindrical roller from datum is 
R plus R cos theta. Okay. Now we are in a position to write the gravitational potential energy term because the total potential energy function will consist of only gravitational potential energy and the mass of the roller is given. And the mass of this roller is equal to small m. Therefore, the weight of this roller will be equal to mg and the height of the center of gravity from the datum. Since the center of gravity of this roller is located above the datum, therefore, this potential energy term will be a positive term. At the height of this center of gravity from the datum, it is equal to r plus r cos theta. So, differentiate this with respect to the variable theta, it will be equal to minus mg r plus r sine theta. And this has to be zero for equilibrium. Okay, for equilibrium, this has to be zero. So, from here, we can see that mg r plus r can't be equal to zero. Therefore, what actually is equal to zero is sine theta is equal to zero which implies that theta will be equal to zero degree or it will be equal to 180 degree now see in this question it is asked that explain that the uh, explain the stability at this position at this position theta is equal to zero okay we have to explain the stability in this position we can clearly see that in this position theta is equal to zero. Therefore, actually we'll be interested only in this value of theta. Okay, that is theta is equal to zero degree. We want to check the stability. Therefore, we have to calculate the second derivative. And in the second derivative term, we'll put theta is equal to zero because we are interested in finding what is the stability of this position. Okay, not at theta is equal to 180 degree. Okay, so we'll forget about this. Theta is equal to 180 degree. We will put this theta is equal to zero in our second derivative equation. So let's calculate the second derivative. So the first derivative was dv by d theta, it was equal to minus mg r plus r sine theta. Now calculating the second derivative, it will be equal to minus mg r plus r cos theta. And the second derivative when theta is equal to zero degree, that will be equal to minus mg r plus r cos 0 and cos 0 is 1 therefore it will be equal to minus mg r plus r and this turns out to be negative when the second derivative is negative we say that it is the condition of unstable equilibrium okay so hence we have proved that this is the condition for the unstable equilibrium. That is the system shown here in this figure, okay? The roller here, the cylindrical roller here in this position will be in the unstable equilibrium. Now let's prove the other case. It states that this position is of the stable equilibrium. We have to prove it, okay? So this is the initial position of the roller, I. This is the final position of the roller when we are giving a slight displacement okay and during this displacement the angle traversed is equal to theta that is the angular displacement is equal to theta now again we have to select the datum plane if this is the center of this circular surface of radius r and this is the datum the horizontal plane passing through the center is the datum we have to locate the position of center of gravity this will be the center of gravity of the cylindrical roller and we have to find this distance because we are calculating the gravitational potential energy. And in this case, it is clearly seen that the center of gravity is below the datum. Therefore, it will be minus 
mg at the distance of the center of gravity of the roller from the datum. One can clearly see that the distance between point O to this point is equal to R plus R. Sorry, it is equal to R. Okay. The distance of O, let me take this point to be suppose B. OB is equal to R and OG will be equal to okay if we want to see what is this distance OG then from OB we have to subtract the radius of this roller therefore OG will be equal to OB minus R that is the radius of the cylindrical roller therefore this OG distance that is the uh, that is this hypotenuse of this right angle triangle because this is theta then this angle will also be equal to theta it will be equal to OB is equal to capital R minus small r okay therefore this distance here will be equal to R minus R cos theta okay so one can write that distance of center of gravity from datum is equal to r minus r cos theta in the previous case it was r plus r cos theta but in this case it is r minus r cos theta and since this distance is vertically downwards okay below the datum therefore We'll have a negative sign here and we'll have r minus r cos theta if we calculate the first derivative of this function with respect to theta we will have minus mg r minus r minus sine theta this will be equal to plus mg okay in fact minus and minus will be plus therefore it will be equal to mg r minus r sine theta for equilibrium this potential energy function will be equal to zero that is the first derivative which is equal to mg r minus r sine theta this will be equal to zero degree this will be equal to zero so from here we again get that this is possible when sine theta is equal to zero degree sine theta is equal to zero and theta should be either zero degree or 180 degree but again we have to prove the condition of the stability in this case so in this case okay in this case theta is equal to zero degree therefore in the second derivative to check the stability we will put only theta is equal to zero degree because we are not interested in the position of theta is equal to 180 degree okay we have to check the stability for this position therefore we will put theta is equal to zero degree in the second derivative okay so first of all writing the first derivative again dv by d theta is equal to it's equal to mg r minus r sin theta calculating the second derivative it will be mg r minus r cos theta and since we are interested in theta is equal to zero degree therefore the second derivative of the potential energy function when theta is equal to zero degree it will be equal to mg r minus r cos of zero degree and cos of zero degree is one therefore we will have mg r minus r and since this result is positive it is the condition of stable equilibrium okay it is the condition of stable equilibrium so hence we proved that this was the unstable equilibrium and 
at this position the system will be in the stable equilibrium okay so let's meet in the next video with few more questions and we'll conclude the course